Hey everyone, welcome back to Bravely Default. Last time, we saved Egil from Starkfort here, and he told us that there was a secret path into the uh, Temple of Fire from the Mithril Mines. Apparently the Vestal of Fire told him that in a dream. I don't really know how the Vestal of Fire is communicating through dreams, it's never really explained, but anyway, apparently she's doing that. And he told us the location of that secret place, so... We could head there, or we could take care of something over here in Starkford. However, on the way here, I realized I couldn't kill anything. Our job setup didn't really have damage output, so I changed the idea over to a monk, still with sub-sword magic. I also gave Tiz a, um, a, the Hermes Sandals to increase his agility, so hopefully he'll go first in battle now, when, uh, so he can use his performer abilities better. And I gave... I'll bring about power bracers. Otherwise, things are pretty much the same. I just bought hammer knuckles for Adia, so she can just do more damage as a monk. Pretty simple. Otherwise, everything is the same. All the abilities are the same. So, we can just head into Stark Fort and deal with the side quest here. So, when we first entered here, when we were looking for Egil, uh, Ringabout commented that to the east was a prison room, I believe, and to the left, or to the west, then, was a poison room. Now, we might have an idea of who might be in the poison room, but it's definitely not a random battle. The one problem with having Adia as a monk is that monks have very low MP, so... She can't really use much sword magic before she runs out, but it should be okay, maybe, I'm hoping. Another problem is right now we really have no one to tank hits. Granted, I don't think we really did before either, because Adia definitely couldn't do it, she was a ranger. What was Zengar level before? He was... Um... Pirate. Yeah, no, no, so no, those can really tank hits, so... I mean, it'd be nice to have, like, a knight or something to do so, but it's not that big of a deal, I suppose, overall. So, before we go forward, you'll want to have poison resistance on every ally. I don't have enough star pendants to do so, and I don't have Adia high enough here in, uh, in Freelancer to have poison immunity. So, we're not going to have her uh, have any resistance to poison. She does have inner alchemy as a monk ability, though, so she can heal herself of poison if she is inflicted. So, we should be okay. Uh, the other three can't be poisoned at all, so they're fine. But, Adia, I'm a little bit worried about it, I'm not going to lie. Curses! After all the glory I brought them, they packed me off to the boondocks to patch up wounded soldiers! All's fair in war, I say! Victory must be achieved at all costs! That is what war is all about! <laughs> Show respect for the enemy! The goal is not simply to kill! Ah! He's far too old to spout such childish nonsense! Pride and honor are merely shackles on the battlefield! <laughs> oh no! Has the Swordmaster disposed of the Master Sample at Grab Keep as well? <laughs> I wouldn't put it past him. He always was a hard-headed one. Fine! Yeah, we could have wiped out the shield bearers with it by now! There is nothing else for it. I must develop a new toxin. I have plenty of test subjects here, after all. Surely, no one will miss a few dozen wounded soldiers. <laughs> when my new toxic weapon is ready, I'll go around that Swordmaster and peddle my wares to the Eternian forces directly. If my father knew of your deeds, that fat neck of yours would be for the axe, you know. What? Who, who is that? My name is Adia Lee. Adia Lee? You, you mean to say you are the Grand Marshal's daughter? I've heard more than enough of your plotting, you black-hearted fiend. Prepare to die. Be quiet! The words of a traitor like you mean nothing! Yeah, this person's fucked up and heartless. Jesus Christ. 
using wounded soldiers as test subjects for your experiments to make a to to make a toxic weapon to kill thousands, possibly millions. I, I don't know if a million people live in Lux and Dark, probably. But, anyway, coming in this fight, you'll also want to have a white magic level 9 and Dispel, which you can buy at Heart's Child. Um, you won't have that, because Kata has... Am I using Tizza Special? I literally don't even remember. Yes, I am. Okay. Um, you want to have that, because they have an ability called Water of Life. That casts Regen on Kata himself, which, um... Which gives him... Sorry, I'm, I'm trying to think right now. Gives him 1,200 HP per turn. Inevitably, when he uses Regen, he's going to get one... I heal off of this no matter what. I don't need to do anything with you. Um, but you can at least stop him from healing a bunch more. But otherwise, he, this fight's just going to go on forever. If you don't have Dispel, you're essentially screwed. Kata uh, is a very dangerous fight, though. And it's possible that... Well, he's going to give us a challenge. I don't think he's going to win. I mean, inevitably, we're, we're going to beat him, but... Yeah, he's definitely not fun to fight, uh, both because of this Water of Life crap that just makes you use Dispel every uh, few turns when he uses it, and because he also has an ability called Dark Breath. That deals his missing HP and damage. Now, that's bad, because he has a lot of HP. More than 9,999. More than we do. So, he can just wipe out a single character in one hit. No problem. And there's nothing really you can do about that. There are items that give you resistance to death, but one, they don't work against it because it's not its not causing the status ailment death immediately. It's just doing a fuck ton of HP damage. Also, I need to use Dispel, uh, which I might have done. I don't remember. No, I'm using Cura. Shit. Um, it deals a fuck ton of HP damage, which, you know, death is a status ailment on its own, but it's... Not, it, it can be caused separately from doing HP damage. I don't know. It's weird. And I don't know how to explain it. Um, but it's not causing that status ailment directly. It's just killing you. I'm bored of you. And you don't have more than 9,999 HP right now. We're barely... We're not even at 2,000. Really. Like, Adia is. But that's just because Monk has a ridiculously high HP. But standard, we don't have... 2,000 HP, even. 9,999 damage. It's a bit much for us. Later on in the game, we actually can weather it, but for now, not so much. Um, do I want to do anything? I guess this is Quara. I don't really know what else to do with you. I don't really need to. I just want to uh, default with you. I honestly haven't even been paying attention to what we've stolen, if anything. Okay, so he's using Dark Breath. There it is, and that's Ring about that. Yeah. And later on, yeah, I only got 5,000 there, but later on it's gonna deal... Oh, it's gonna deal a lot more. Luckily, he did have to Brave to do that, so we have a uh, free turn here, basically. So we can go ahead and... Uh, raise Ringabel, the Sage's Staff, and then just run a couple Curas on Ringabel and Adia. And with Adia, we can use Inner Alchemy to get rid of that poison. Especially since she's really low in health, so she really can't deal with that poison right now. She's probably going to die if she does, if I if I made her. Well, actually, I don't think the poison would do 400 damage. That seems a bit much, but it still do quite a bit and be really, really bad, so we don't want to deal with. Uh, just continue default. You... Um, well, out of our special so this attack, I guess. Try and get as much off it as possible. Poison that potion? Of course! Of course! You use it on the one person who doesn't have poison resistance! Fuck you! Piece of shit. Like, I, can you use it on literally anyone else? Because I would heavily prefer that. Also, ring the bell, could you steal anything? Please. Because that would be fantastic. Right, so we should probably get physical defense up, I guess. I just really hope he doesn't use um, Dark Breath on Anyas, because otherwise we're out of our Dispel. We just can't do that. So that would be bad. So please... Okay, for just this is a fire attack item. Oh, boy. Okay. At least you don't have to use MP to raise people. Please. Okay, good. Thank you. If you're going to attack anyone, that's the ideal one. They defaulted and they had poison resistance. That's perfect. Uh, physical defense isn't really going to help us. I guess I'll just go for physical attack. So, you raise, uh, ring a bell. 
and then uh, run cures on him and deer. And you just continue attacking, I guess. Hopefully you can land some crits and get uh, your special up, but I don't think that's going to happen. Alright, so everyone's back up to decent health. I mean, really, as long as we have more than, like, 500 HP, we're good. <laughs> because, otherwise it doesn't really matter, because uh, he can just wipe us out. One hit, in the dark breath. I hate it. I hate it, because it just... It's not really fair or fun to deal with. It's not like, oh man, I wonder like what strategies I can do to, to counter that. There's none. There are no strategies around Dark Breath. You just have to deal with the fact that you're going to die in one hit. Okay, they were only carrying a Fledgerson. There is nothing worth stealing from Kata. Good to know. Now Ring of can actually attack and we can maybe do some damage. Unfortunately, our team is not exactly a damage dealing team right now. I guess we have double damage. We can go and do that. Even though he's probably going to just, just like wipe out Ring of Bell right now. <sighs> Hold on, yes, okay. Um, that's worse. That's significantly worse. Phoenix down, potion. Because I think we actually have to specifically use a potion for that one tutorial quest we have. We also have to use um, ether and then a magic, so I guess we should probably get that out of the way while I'm thinking about it, because I'm not going to think about it ever again. So, ether. Actually, you should probably use that on Mega Bell. So I can use more double damage. Uh, Aether and Kira. Double damage and stack. And this fight's probably gonna go on for a while. We're not dealing 1,000 damage, 2,000 damage like we were before with the Ranger. So, actually, I don't know if you have to use the Aether on the individual that's gonna cast the magic. I really hope not, because that would be annoying. I really hope we can just cast it on anyone that can only counts. It only checks if you use the Aether and then use magic in order. It doesn't check who the ether was used on. Hopefully that's the case. Otherwise we're we're a spot of a bother. Uh I guess scale strip and just attack. We do have Adia special, we also have Anius's. And we're probably gonna have uh Tiz's soon enough. We're probably gonna have everyone's well, Adia's dead. Uh dying does not get rid of your special, thankfully. So we still have hers. Uh I guess he's rejuvenation, might as well. Because uh Get the MP back and revive it at the same time. Can't hurt. And I guess I'll just keep using Shell Split or Scale Strip or whatever the one that I think is Scale Strip. That would make sense because, like, you strip off a dragon's scales and then its defenses are gone. That would make sense. That's how you can remember it. Think of dragons and just getting them alive. It's a nice thought, isn't it? It's probably not. Use Fire Up. Use Double Damage a couple times, as many times as possible. That's Shell Split. And uh, I think we already have the active, so we don't. Also, it's Shell Split. But skill, I guess either one makes sense. Shell split, scale strip. Like if you, if you take a turtle and get off its shell, then its defenses are gone. Like I guess makes sense still. Scale strip would also make. Either way, it makes sense. Don't really know how scales are more resistant to magic. I mean, I guess the dragon could survive in fire because it's like made of fire, and there's like no, it's not made of fire. I guess some dragons are made of fire, but not all of them. That's just a generalization. It's really racist, actually. I apologize to all, all dragons out there. Use as a special. Use to spell. And otherwise, just continue attacking. Kriegong wave, I guess. Yeah, I, I mean, it's useful for the few times that he is defaulting to pierce that. Unfortunately, he did use the one time I had to use his special. So that sucks. Oh well. Did I use to spell? I'm pretty sure I used to spell. I'm like half paying attention. There we go. Nice. I did the right thing. Fantastic. Good for me. Uh, continue just attacking. Because you're full uh, MPP anyway. We'll be ready to use... Bring about special. For what? Uh, we also have ideas. Okay. Except someone's gonna die today. Unless we kill him. Nope. Someone's dead. Okay. That's... Fine, I guess. I mean, it's not. I'd rather no one be dead, but... Not much I can do about it. Used... We're gonna have to use two cures. So... Raise... Cura, Cura. I wish you could organize the uh, the list of magic in battle, but unfortunately you can't to be like... Specifically your healing spells. Especially when it's on a... Uh, on Red Mage. You have such a long list of black and white magic to go through. It can be very tiring to deal with that. 
Especially when you use like a variety of stuff in a single turn. Or even like several turns, because it remembers your position in the menus. It's it's awful to go through the red mage menu. Another reason though I don't like that job. Let's see, I guess we'll go and use a DS special. Maybe we'll finish Kata off. I'm not sure how much we've done and how much he has left, but. Also, I want to say that I thought Kata was a female first time I played this game, and for the first several times I played this game. But, well, it doesn't matter. He's dead anyway. It doesn't matter what gender I thought I thought he was. 3,000 XP. Nice. And 360 JP. That's enough for Ring a Bell. And that's a mug. That's nice. And a Dragon Fang. The best item. I should also mention the, um, the Valtors you can encounter in... Eisenberg in the Eisen region, you can steal beast livers from them, which are also essential to getting the best item in the game. But of course, we get the salve maker asterisks. So, use items to maximum effect, use items to heal and attack, favors, daggers, and staves. So, this is an interesting class. You basically take items and combine them to make new things, such as this water of life to grant regen, or, um,. Do damage, you can combine items to make bomb arms like that. To deal fire damage, you can straight up combine items to. Well, it's it's hard it's hard to show it here. Like you get a bomb arm, you can combine items to make things. Basically, that's it. So, the specialty of Salve Maker is healing lore, which is amazing. It gives you times two effectiveness to healing abilities. So, note on this: in battle, if you want that times two bonus, it specifically has to be the person with healing lore. That uses the item. So if uh, if Ringabel, who I'm gonna equip Salve Maker to, ha actually is that a good idea? I'll equip it to Tiz actually. If Tiz has Salve Maker, and um, they use a potion or they use an Ether on someone, it'll heal 80 MP. However, if Anya did it without healing lore, she would only do the standard 40. However, outside of battle, it doesn't matter. Uh, it, well, it doesn't matter who you're healing, I guess, because you. Don't really heal with a specific party member inside of battle. Outside of battle, you always have that times two bonus to healing. So in battle, specifically has to be the person with healing lore. Outside of battle, always have it. Amazing skill. Amazing skill, especially for ethers. Because turbo ethers now will heal 300 MP. It's amazing. Anyway, compounding at level one. You can bind two items for an effect. It's broken. It's amazing. We'll get to why for a few specific items and abilities you get from it. Uh, experiment at level 3 transforms consumable items into an attack item. So say you don't need a potion or something, you can turn it into a bomb arm, like we're doing right here. Uh, inoculate at level 5 uses a consumable item that cures an ailment to give immunity to that ailment. So say you use a, uh, an antidote with inoculate. You will, you will give someone poison immunity for 6 turns from that item. Widen area at level 8. Use an item to affect all party members, so say you need to heal everyone and your healer's dead, or maybe a lot of people are dead and you need to use a phoenix down. It takes one BP extra, so use two BP to use this move. Um, and you can use a phoenix down on the whole party and revive everyone. You can also do this with a potion or an ether. So, awesome, of course. Healing low at level 9, already talked about that. Turn toxic at level 10. Poison and damage an enemy equal to the amount of a recovery item. So we have a, we can turn a potion into a, uh, a poison damage item and do 150 damage and poison the enemy. Again, very helpful. We can also use high potions and X potions. Auto Phoenix at level 11 automatically uses a Phoenix down on a KO'd ally at the end of the turn. Kind of helpful. You still have to have a Phoenix down in your inventory for this to happen. It's not like it gives you a free Phoenix down to revive someone. But still, cool. Makes you not have to think about doing it, because you're probably going to do it anyway. And makes you still have to waste a turn doing so. Very helpful. Um, it's kind of situational in certain fights where it would be. It'd be helpful in this damn fight, because, you know, you have to revive people all the damn time. But uh, in certain other fights, it, it can be helpful as well. Uh, collect at level 12. You get an item during battle. It's different by location. I'm not really sure what the area, like what items are by area. Maybe I'll try and find a guide on that. Um, but it's it's kind of helpful. It's cool at least. I don't know if it's really that helpful. Resurrect at level 13. Resurrect all KO'd allies with 25 max HP. Essentially, you widen area of Phoenix Down, but without using a Phoenix Down. That's all. Feel no pain at level 14. Your HP won't fall for two turns, but after that second turn, all the damage is taken at once. So, this is difficult to explain, but say you get into a fight, 
and the opposing party deals like a thousand damage to Tiz. In those first two turns, his HP won't go down. But after those first two turns, he'll take those a thousand that a thousand uh, damage all at once. It's useful for grinding, and that's about it. In because you obviously won't take any damage during that fight then. But otherwise, it's difficult to find a use for it. But still, really, really cool. So in terms of stat affinities, you're not really great in anything. You have decent intelligent, uh, intelligence and mind, which makes it possible to use magic with it, but not ideal, but still possible. And I might be doing that. I'm not sure if I'm going to have magic or performer as my sub-job on Tiz. I'm going to think... Oh, man, I still want time magic, though. Because gravity is awesome. We'll see. I'll think about it. Anyway, arms aptitudes, you have great in staves and daggers, and decent in knuckles, kind of suck and everything else. Um, you really should only be using daggers with this job, though, because you're going to be using items all the time. That's your main thing, and you'll get your special built up easy with this job, because you're going to be using items all the time. So really, you only should be using daggers unless you have maybe white mage as a sub-job on it, and maybe then go for staves. I can't really think of why you want to have knuckles on this job, but it's a thing you can do, I guess. And no armor aptitude, because again, you're not really meant to be taking hits or doing damage at all, so... Well, not doing damage with physical attacks at all. No! It cannot end here! I have left so many experiments undone! My... <coughs> toxins... could kill you... in... seconds! <laughs> right, party chat. Organizing items. Now that we have the salve maker asterisk, it should let us heighten the performance of our items. And combine items to make them more powerful as well. Hmm, that sounds handy. But not really very exciting, is it? You might think so, but Jesus Christ, is it? I know, right? Far too humdrum for us. In other words, you two are too lazy to organize your items. No, we're not lazy. There are simply other things you'd rather do. It's all fine and dandy to have acquired the salve maker job, but your item bags are a jumbled mess. It must take forever to find what you need when you need it. For example, Adia, don't keep your potions with your high potions. What? They're both restoratives, so why not? And you ring a bell. Don't lump antidotes, echo herbs, and wake-up bells together. Why not? Together, they're like a cure-all. What if you only need one of them? Never find it in time. You should learn from Agnes' organization skills. Ah, but Agnes, there's no need to keep each of your pills separately. Oh, yes, of course. Tiz, you and Agnes are sure sticklers for detail. Adi and I, on the other hand. Well, to each his own, right? That's right. That's what the details is my... My... Ah! Uh, uh, no! It's it, 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 the other! Chew! Wait... You just need to weigh all the powder items. Well, that means few items to organize, right? Let's go! <sighs> I love that part of chat. Dio yeah, always looking on the bright side of things. Phoenix down potion. I guess it does check... For uh, who, who the ether is used on. Okay. That sucks. <laughs> Thanks for telling us this. So yeah, we can go into these journal. Go to notes, I believe, terms, no, notes, yes. No, that's not it. Oh, we, we got some with Barbarossa? Oh. Well, as far as you know, I read that in the, the video we fought Barbarossa in. Um. <laughs> I didn't even know that. Wow, okay. Um. People, where is the house? Is, is it an encyclopedia? That's, I need to stop opening the help. Uh, items. Abilities. Compounding. There we go. We have zero compounding things, but there are, well, let's see, a total of 89 compounding things you can make. A lot of them are kind of useless. It's like, for some reason, this includes combining a potion and a potion to make a potion. It's like, why? <laughs> You're not making anything unique. It really should only include the unique stuff, but for some reason, it doesn't. I'm not going to make every single item in this list because of that, at least not on screen. Because I'm not going to make you sit through me just sitting through, or going through battles, combining a potion and a potion to make a potion, or a phoenix down and a phoenix down to make a phoenix down. That's stupid. Again, it really only should include the, um, the, the unique items, but it doesn't for some reason. 
Uh, okay, here in Narende, I finished that, so we got the magic knife, and I'm just working on the armor shop now. Because uh, otherwise, we only have uh, cosmetic items that I'm going to get later. So, yeah. Anyway, let's get into a fight after I equip the salve maker job, ideally. There we go. And we should equip you with that dagger now. I guess, um, I guess we should just go with the performer. Because... I guess, hmm. Well, I guess your lore and rods doesn't really matter, but you're not gonna have a rod equipped. I guess we could equip a rod, though. That's not, um, hold on. Yeah, okay. We can do the same damage with that. Um, I guess I'll keep him on time magic then. Because it's helpful to have things like gravity and. and some of the buffs as well. Mm, but performer... Man, I don't know. I think we'll stick with this for now. So let's try and get into a fight so I can show off some of the things we can do with Salve Maker. Some of the really, really cool things. So. We're just going to focus on Tiss here. We have Medication as our main job now. We can compound Potion Potion again to make a potion useless. You can compound uh, two different potions to make a Water of Life. That applies to Regen. I don't think it matters which one you do. It's always uh, a certain amount. I don't think it matters uh, which one you use. It doesn't heal anymore if you take an X potion or a high potion. A potion and a Phoenix down. KO uh, restores an ally from KO and restores a lot of HP. Uh, you might as well always do this because you're trying. To, you're probably going to heal them anyway afterwards. So just combine a potion with a Phoenix down, and you get a lot of HP back. Potion and Ether makes an X potion. However, you can also combine two Ethers to make an Ether that restores more uh, MP. Which is kind of old. I think it is the same with potions, yeah. You basically combine two potions and make a 300 HP potion, which technically then is a unique item, but it it's like just not worth putting it in the list. Like we can do 3000 HP healing with X potions, but again, it's just kind of stupid that's in the list. Two Phoenix Downs doesn't do anything special. Might heal more HP when you revive, but again, just combine a potion and Phoenix Down. Um, Turbo Ether and Ether just combines the two into some combo, say if you have 500 MP. You combine Elixir to do nothing special. I think if you combine it with a Phoenix Down, maybe? Nope, anything with an Elixir just turns into an Elixir, okay. Uh, there are certain things, like if you combine Ether and a, um, a, a Ether and an Antidote, we get immunity to poison, which you can also do with, uh, with any other item, so immunity blind, immunity silence, and we can do it the inverse. Wait, I want to do it. What did I what did I check out before? There was something I checked before that gave me something else. Am I dumb? Ether antidote. Maybe not. If we combine these two, with smelling salts, that secures a wide range of things. So basically you can make a remedy if you combine two different status element healing items. Uh, so Wing was kinda of right. The, if you combine them all they are a cure all. How combining eye drops and a wake up bell turns into salt, I don't know, but whatever. Uh, otherwise, remedy and anything else just turns into a remedy. So, the interesting thing comes with all these compounding materials, specifically for this. They can't be used in battle otherwise, so there's a lot to go over here. You can make a lot of different things. You can make a beast coat here by doing that. If uh, something, if two things are generally incompatible, you'll simply make a Rage Orb that deals minor ta uh, damage and taunts a target, which essentially makes that serial more likely, and then more likely target the user. Um, otherwise, there's a lot of different things we can make from here. I don't know them off, uh, all offhand. Um, <laughs> I'll put a list in the description of all compounding materials in case you're wondering. The one you really, really, really should notice or, or care about is Beast Liver and Dragon's Fang. This doubles someone's max HP and heals it to full. Now, that is amazing because it's it's not that great right now. I mean, it is. I mean, we'll get, what, like, uh, like 3,400 HP with Tiz or something? That's awesome. And, and of course, the is going to get, like, 4,400. That's, that's amazing, but it's really, really, really helpful later on in the game when you can get like 15,000 HP or 20,000 HP because your HP is so high already from being such a high level. It, it makes... It, it, this is why it would be helpful against Kata because you could survive Dark Breath 
because it's only going to deal a max of 9999 HP. If you have more than that, then that's awesome. Obviously, it wouldn't be helpful right now because we couldn't do that. You can't use multiples and like double your already doubled HP. It can only double once. But it is amazing. There's some other really cool ones I don't know offhand. Resistance to certain elements. Uh, another thing are these um, things imbued with the power of an element. We can combine two of them, so we combine two Phlogistons to make a Bomb Arm, deal major fire damage. Same thing with Perma Crystals, water damage, Fairy Wing, wind damage, so on and so forth, which each element. Mainly, Glitter Bug and Dark Matter are important because they deal light and dark magic, which are very, very difficult to come by uh, otherwise, and even when you do come by them, they're very, very expensive to do in terms of MP cost. And MP is a bit more of a important thing later on in the game. Well, M money is as important later on in the game because you kind of already bought everything anyway. So you'll have plenty of money to buy these from the adventurer if you've been working at the compounding shop in Narende. That should be everything. Uh, again, there's plenty of different things you can do. The order of things you combine them in any way also does matter. So we did Beast Liver and Dragon Fang to make that Dragon Draft. Before, but if we do a Dragon Fang and a Beast Liver, we get Dragon Vim, which raises our physical attack by 50%. So the order you combine them in does matter. Again, if we do Beast Liver or Dragon Fang, we don't get Dragon Vim, but we get Giant Draft. So that matters too. So there's a ton of different combinations. Again, I'll, I'll try to have a link in the description, or a list in the description, of all the different compounding items that are, uh, you know, unique. Because otherwise, if you just combine a potion, and a potion, you just get a fucking better potion, which I'm not going to bother listing because there's no point in that. But anything unique, I will uh, try to have listed in the description below. Uh, anyway, let's just murder these things. We have a few... Let's see, we have a few... Where are they? Fallen shards, let's go and use those. And we can only use... Well, I guess I was going to use more than that, but I guess it's brave, so we'll just deal with that. That's fine. These guys should die anyway. Uh, we'll just go and attack you, because I don't want to attack the Blade, because it has counter. Actually, no, the Pikemen's have counter. Oh, no! I attacked literally the, the wrong person. Okay, well, that sucks. Hopefully, Anyas and Tiz go first. They aren't. Okay. That's bad. Uh, Adia might die. Okay, no, she's fine. And you can see just how much damage that does. I should mention as well, when you use an attack item like that, it pierces defense and it pierces default. It always does a consistent amount of damage. This pierces even certain shields in the game that otherwise completely negate damage. It's amazing just how broken Salve Maker really is when you get down to it. It's one of my favorite jobs. I seriously, seriously love it to death. Uh, I'm probably going to be sticking with it for a lot of the game because it's so damn helpful. And speaking of, I want to buy a few things from the adventurer. I'm not sure how much money I really have to waste on things. Not waste, but... Uh, I don't really need to buy Dragon Fangs yet. Um, so I don't think I will. I do... I don't really need to buy any of this stuff, actually. I'll, I'll buy a few Beast Livers. Like, I'll buy up to 20 of these. And I don't want to buy that many of these because, again, they are so expensive. Um, because they're so good. Oh, one thing as well you can do. Uh, Dragon Fangs. Two Dragon Fangs make uh, an item that deals your current HP in damage. Combine that with a Giant's Draft, you're consistently doing 9,999 damage. Awesome. That's just awesome. You can do so much damage with this damn job. And it doesn't even... It, you might think not, because it has like a pretty weak damage. Uh, or strength affinity, but it's it's seriously one of the strongest jobs you can get in the game. Anyway. Now that we've broken this game in half with, um... with Salve Maker, let's, um... let's end this episode here. So next time, we'll go back to the Myth of Mine, and we'll try and find that uh, secret passage that Egil mentioned. Next time, we'll go back to the Myth of Mine and try and find that secret passage into the Temple of Fire that Egil mentioned. So that we can hopefully finally awaken the fire crystal. So, see you guys then. <laughs> that was close. I made the right call drinking that concoction to fake my death. It seems the Vestal was convinced of my demise. <laughs>
The world is indeed full of fools. <laughs> now, it is time I left this wretched place. So you flee again, do you? But, but of course! I do what I must to survive, by any means necessary. As long as I survive, I am confident my fortunes will be reversed. <laughs> After all, who but I can create weapons with the power to kill tens of thousands in one fell blow? <laughs> And once I am ready, I will obliterate you all! The sword bearers and shield bearers, the vestal, and even the black blades! And, and then, the world shall be! Oh. Mine? Uh. <laughs> uh. Not the world of the living.